In this video, we're going to take a look at variable keyword arguments in Python. And we've now reached the summit of complexity when it comes to parameters and arguments. So I don't think it really gets more complicated than this, which may be a relief to you. Let's imagine that you work for the police and you want to have a database that allows you to collect descriptions of suspects. So let's have a function called add description and we will imagine we'll pretend that this adds descriptions of suspects to some kind of a database we'll have a main down here as well which we'll do something with in a minute and at the bottom we'll call main now the problem here is that we don't know what things witnesses are going to remember about someone who's committed a crime that they've seen. So what we want is an open-ended list of things. We want to be able to say, for example, height equals whatever, 180 centimeters, beard equals yes, trousers equal green, whatever, stuff like this. Just whatever springs to people's minds. So we want a kind of open-ended list, but the point is, that we want the names of descriptive elements of the person plus the values of those descriptive elements. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's say we want to type add description height equals 180, weight equals 90 kilograms or whatever, eyes equal blue, stuff like that. But someone else might remember a different set of things. So Someone else might remember they were wearing black trousers and they had a beard. You could say beard equals true. Maybe that's all they remember. And someone else might say sex equals male, height equals 170, stuff like this. So in every case, we've got an open-ended list of things. We've got a bunch of the names of properties of a person, essentially together with the values of those properties, right? So we can say weight is a property, 90 kilograms is the value of that property. So we're passing pairs of things. It's as if we're passing keyword arguments here, but we don't know in advance what the names of these keyword arguments should be. And we don't even know how many of them there should be. So we've got three here but we've got only two here. How can we handle that? Well, we can handle that with a double asterisk. So we'll put two asterisks here, and then I'll make up the name of a variable, like description. And let's print this out. Let's actually print the type of it so we can see what it is. And then we'll print the actual object itself. And what we get when we run this is we see the type of this thing here is dict, which is short for dictionary. We've seen tuple before, and dictionary, along with tuple, are fundamental built-in types in Python, which we're going to look at in a lot more detail later on. But for the moment, all we really need to see is that Dictionaries consist of key value pairs. So this is a key value pair. We've got a comma then, and we've got another key value pair and another key value pair. So these are keys, these things here. These are values. So 90, 180, blue, true, male, 170. Those are all values that correspond to the keys that we've added. Notice that we don't put quotes around the key names. We type them exactly as though they are the names of parameters, which they aren't, or at least they're not the names of predefined parameters, but we can make up our own parameters using this syntax. Now, how would we loop over these? Let's delete this. So we've seen that you can write for and then a variable name Let's write here, I'll call it prop for property, for prop in. And here we could have, as we've seen, a tuple, or 
we could have a range. But what we can also have is a dictionary, a dict. So let's write description here and then do print prop. And actually at the bottom of this function, I'm going to put a print just to create a blank line here. So if you run this, we get the names of these properties coming out. So we've got height, weight, eyes, that's, that's from here. Trouser, beard, that's right, let's change that to trousers actually. Or what Americans call pants. And we've got sex and height down here as well. Now how do we actually get the values that correspond to these keys? Well, let's put a comma in and print some punctuation here. I'll put a colon in there. So this is just a string that I'm supplying to print. Then a comma. And now to actually get the values of these keys, we need the original structure, which I call description. And after that, we have an open and close pair of square brackets. And into the square brackets, we put the name of the key, which I called prop. So that's just a name I made up again, just a variable name. And if we run this, now we get the names of the properties together with their values as well. So a dictionary or dict, which is what this is, is kind of like a lookup table, which has a bunch of keys and for every key it has a value. And these keys are actually ending up as strings. So these are actually strings that we're printing here. Whereas the values that correspond to the keys, they are going to have different types depending on what they are. So this is going to be an int. That's going to be a Boolean. This is a string and so on. You could verify that if you printed out the value of the type function on the key here and on the property here. Now this is actually really useful and it's used a lot in Python. So I would recommend typing this out for yourself and getting it working so you can actually see it working after you've typed it out yourself. And then if you want a bit of practice with it, just put that code away and see if you can then write a program that uses a variable keyword argument from memory. See how you get on with that, whether you can remember all of this syntax or not. This is one of the last free videos that I'll be uploading to YouTube from my premium Python course. But don't forget that if you register free on my website, caveofprogramming.com, not only will you get access to a bunch of completely free courses right away, but also when I hold a sale, you can get notified about it and potentially you can get any of my premium courses at a sharp discount. And don't worry if you do click the box to say that you don't mind receiving marketing emails from me. I'm going to be emailing you at most once a month. So please do consider registering free to caveofprogramming.com and you'll get immediate access to a bunch of courses. Thank you so much. And until next time, happy coding.